Today's topic is how we streamlined our SDLC with observability. We are an observability company, but today it's not about what we do as standard trace from a product perspective, but really how we are streamlining our processes, how we develop internally. I couldn't have a better partner with me on stage like Mike Tall. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Yul. <laughs> um, maybe a couple of words to your person. Uh, yes, I'm Chief Product Architect in Dynatrace, uh, strong focus on cloud deployment, infrastructure, and so on. And I think this is also the part we will focus on today, making our developers happy and understand what is actually happening. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough to, be, to work with this company for almost 17 years now, and I've kind of been part of engineering, but also have a DevRel role, and I'm also a CNCF ambassador. So today, I really want to also make the connection to the other CNCF projects. One thing that I am very proud of, uh, a lot of the lessons learned from our internal adoption story uh, of observability in the life cycle of platform engineering also made it into a, into a book that we just published together with Max Körbacher, another CNCF ambassador, and Hillary from, uh, from Red Hat. I happen to have one copy of the book with me. So for any good questions, and only good questions in the end, <laughs> there will be a book available. We have a couple of more copies uh, at the Dynatrace booth tomorrow in case you're interested. So this book is purely focusing from a CNCF perspective on platform engineering uh, and the role of observability. Today's agenda, I know we only have 23 minutes left, so who we are, because I think it's good for you to understand how we relate to your size of the company, uh, your, your scope, then how we got started with actually monitoring the SDLC, how we optimize the tools in the SDLC, optimizing the flow of artifacts, and some lessons learned in the end. I want to highlight some of the collaboration that we've already started with the CNCF project, and also encourage you to come up to us later on to have discussions on how we can better make the SDLC observable. Uh, to kick it off, who we are, I think, Michael, you are best to explain who we are, what we do. OK, then let's get going. From a company perspective, uh, maybe for this talk, it's very interesting to understand how many developers we have, where we are hosting our platform, and what complexity we have. So just some insights around 2,000 developers are working every day on our product. This is focused on the SaaS solution. So that's also something to be mentioned, because we have different flavors, basically, of the product on the market out there. Um, from a scope perspective, we are hosting on three cloud vendors, so on the major three, and uh, around the globe available. So that means a lot of production instances uh, around the globe, as well as uh, quite some staging, where you need to test, of course, cross-cloud vendor, all the functionalities around. Important also to say that uh, this is a mixed environment, so we rely on cloud native services as well as our own build services that we are then hosting, for example, on Kubernetes. And uh, this mix is basically rolled out from the starting point with a two weeks pace. A short look on our software development lifecycle, so just to give you a bit of a feeling, maybe you find some tools by yourself again, and yourself in the same situation. Important is we stuck everywhere Dynatrace because we are customer zero, we are treating ourselves as customer zero, and we are trying to use our product as much as we can, of course. But uh, a lot of the surrounding products uh, going through the lifecycle are a mix, basically, of CNCF projects, of uh, closed source projects, uh, and so on. So when you put the pieces together, you have a lot of tools. And the tools are actually quite wired with the dependencies, especially when you have a look from a developer perspective, how they're interacting with the tools, and also the typical questions you have on the screen, like, yeah, I pushed now my code. What is happening? Where did my object go to? Uh, is it now deployed on the right stage? Can I start my testing, or, or things like that? And it's important, basically, to get them an understanding in order to be prepared for all the development work and all the necessary uh, changes or adjustments they need to do. So when you put that on the flow, it's getting even more complicated, because it's first just tools that are interacting. But of course, we have a significant staging 
uh, different stages for different purposes on the development where still developers have access, going up to hardening with end-to-end uh, -end testing, continuous load testing, and so on. And then later on, of course, uh, rolling out to production with different cycles uh, and different uh, ring deployments. So here the classics is, uh, why is my code not yet on this specific stage? Why can I not start testing, or why didn't my test kick off? Um, where get I stuck is something uh, odd with my delivery. So what we have also built, and we are still improving, to be very honest, is our development platform. So we are hosting an internal development platform in order to enable our developers. So a certain entity of us is building out that platform. And in the platform, basically, you want to get a specific experience. So here I have a ticket with a requirement. From the requirement, basically, you want to go to a portal and say, hey, I want to start my application. So you need to give easy access and all of that with the details then coming forward into a materialized repository because you don't want to have the developer starting from scratch. Going forward, of course, then the developer wants to work, so there needs to be a workplace. And then from the workplace, of course, the coding itself. But that's just the start, basically, of the journey. We didn't touch yet all the other tools that were on the list. And that's the bottom part, basically, we will also focus on today. Cool. So, where did we start? Yeah, so we started, uh, if you think about all these tools and the chain that you just saw from starting with the Jira ticket, going into backstage, getting the Git repository, and then everything magically happens, um, there's a lot of tools involved, and we want to make sure that all of these tools that basically build a platform, we treat them, I always say, with the same observability respect than we are doing with the business-critical apps that you and your organizations are are delivering, right? For us, for our engineers, Michael, and correct me if I'm wrong, our platform is the most business critical thing for them because with that, without that platform, nothing works for them. And so we need to monitor every single tool. To give you some tips, and all the screenshots that I show you here, there's also a Git repository with uh, the queries against Prometheus or the logs of all of these different tools. So you can also replicate what we have been doing internally. Our journey for most developers starts in backstage. Quick show of hands, backstage, I assume, is also something you look into. Yeah? Backstage exposes um, a minimum amount of observability, I would say, but one, what they do really well is logs. So what we are doing is we're extracting the logs and the most common log patterns of backstage to understand who is using backstage, which teams are using it, which templates are used, which templates are no longer used because we also want to throw those away if nothing is used. Most importantly, if there's any misconfiguration in our templates that leads to broken repositories, we want to highlight this as well. So we are analyzing the logs that are coming out, and if something is wrong, we automatically jump on it and not wait until developers complain that they cannot do their job. Further down the line, right, we have tools like Jenkins that are still building. I know we're moving also now to GitHub Actions. Uh, but whatever CI, CD you have, you can use tools and frameworks like OpenTelemetry. Uh, we have, for Jenkins, there's an open telemetry plugin. For GitHub, there was just a re GitHub receiver uh, announced. Uh, also, Nicolas, who is there in the back, he built uh, a GitLab receiver, and I will, uh, we have a session on Thursday. So the point is that you want to observe your CI, CD, because you want to know if your pipelines get slower, where they break, if somebody did a shortcut and didn't execute all of the steps as well, and then you want to jump on it. Going further down the line, once artifacts get built, they get pushed to Harbor. Right? Harbor is a very central component for us. If Harbor doesn't work, if Harbor slows down, we have a problem. Our developers have a problem. We cannot push our changes fast enough. So again, Harbor provides a lot of great insights. You can see these dashboards. Again, all of the dashboards that we share here, uh, feel free to, share, to, to access them on our Git repository. Caverno, our policy agent. Same thing, we observe Caverno because our security team wants to know which policies are currently violated because we want to jump on it. We want to educate engineers why we are not allowing certain things to be uh, promoted into the next stage. All of these tools, whatever you have, remember there's certain, a certain observability aspect that you want to, to embed. So you jump on problems before they become a problem for developers. Same is true with Argo. Argo has great exposure of Prometheus metrics. Argo has great logs. Make sure you're following the best practices to monitor these tools and then jump on any type of problems before they become a problem. Last but not least in our list is, is Crossplane, also a very popular tool for infrastructure as code or everything as code. 
If cross-plane doesn't work for us, if it slows down, if the providers slow down, we have a problem. And we want to jump on this, and you want to jump on this as well. So check out what these tools all expose in terms of metrics. Now, we went from individual tool monitoring to really then also focus on the, the pipeline. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there's great initiatives going on in the CNCF to making any type of pipeline easier observable end-to-end. -end. We also do this internally for GitHub, where we are using the GitHub webhooks ingesting them into our observability platform, and we can then run all of our analytics, and we can understand and identify where pipelines are not running as expected, where things are failing, and before there's a big failure, we can jump on it. And if you're not using GitHub, but uh, let's say, you know, GitLab, I want to highlight again the session that we're doing on Thursday with Nicolas. Uh, Nicolas has built a GitLab receiver where you can just stream GitLab webhooks to an open telemetry collector that is then converting this into open telemetry spans. So you get an end-to-end -end trace of every single GitLab pipeline. So this was just the start to get visibility into those tools. The next question is, what can we do with this data? How can we optimize based on this data? Yeah, as Andy said, uh, just to know basically the information is not enough because, uh, yeah, then you are alerted and you get some information. But uh, actually what you need is uh, KPIs. You need to define basically for every tool the individual KPIs for the tools itself that are relevant basically for the tasks that you're executing. So it's the KPI based in combination basically with your workloads that you're running on that tools because the tools can be used very differently. And that can be... Very simple, of course, uh, what is my CPU and what is my memory? Uh, yeah, but uh, typically you want to go up and find out, do I get collision, resource collisions, for example, because I have heavy load on my tool and uh, uh, my scale out, for example, is not working properly. So you also have to have the right measure points, the right data, and the relevant KPIs in order to progress with the optimization. Also for the flows, for example. Uh, typically, you look into the flows, you measure the time, what are the single steps that, that the time takes. Uh, you want to find outlayers. You want to be sure that not on average it's working. You want to be sure it's always working. So why are there even outlayers? So this is a very important part to focus on. And actually, the starting point. Because till now, you know basically from a deployment view then what you have, what you have where, you understand your tools that brings your software there. So you can also build something like we built, for example, a deployment dashboard where I see on all the stages basically down the road which versions of which components are available and uh, are they healthy, are they in state from the tools I'm observing. And this is a very relevant information because this I can share basically with my developer workforce. This I can share with a security team as well that wants to have insights and see, oh, do we have a vulnerability in this specific version, for example, and where does it actually live? It's a lot of stages, huh? Yeah, yeah. we have a lot of them, <laughs> but we want to build quality, so. Yeah. So actually, tool observability is great, but now we want to identify the flow. So in the beginning, I told you, we come from a requirement, and we want to get to running software. So all these tools need to get somehow connected in the flow. So this is just a very simplified starting flow, where you typically have just a push, basically, of a software, and then it starts all. You want to build the software. You make an S-bomb. You make the signing. You upload something. You have tons of pipelines. You make out of it, again, a container. This needs to go somewhere, going down, down, down. And then, oh, this was just the first step. We are just on the first branch. We are not yet in the release branch. We are not yet down any of the stages. So important is here to start with events, basically on each of the faces, on each of the tools that you have in place to get the necessary information junked together. And that, for example, you can simply then do with uh, software development lifecycle events that we will come here to. So we are working currently on a specification on the software development lifecycle events. So you know, maybe from CNCF, there are the CD events. Also, Open Telemetry is working on that. I think you will focus on that later. But we want to span broader. We want to cover, basically, the whole software development lifecycle, not just a certain piece of the cake. And that needs you to define, basically, all the nitty-gritty steps on 
what is software, what is software checked in, where do I build, where do I basically then test, deploy, and so on. And to close the loop also, where do I verify that actually everything is running? So how do I get there actually is also important with new KPIs. You know, now you have two KPIs, but two KPIs do not help you actually on the flow because they just show the individual tool. So you want to understand the end-to-end -end journey. Why is it slow? Or why is one of the flows end-to-end -end seen slow? Maybe it's human effort that is inside and you didn't automate one of the steps and every time, as an example, Andy only wants to approve on Friday. So that slows you significantly down. And looking up into that, understanding the flow, having the right KPIs and also the right comparisons to give you basically an understanding, is it fast or is it slow? So you also need to compare basically the complexity. You need to understand, is this a complex flow? Is this something actually that should be done in two seconds? And why is it now taking 50 seconds? So with having the KPIs on the flows and the software development lifecycle events that conjunct them, you get basically the information you need to move forward. So what you can then build out is a phase model. You can say, okay, what are my rollout phases? What are my step phases? And you can see what is the time basically taken in the step phases. Do I have outlayers? Do I have commons? Uh, is my expectation right? Is something broken or stuck? I can also identify very easily because every Monday someone changed something, so it always gets stuck on Monday. And here, we're also very important is you need quality gates. So you need to identify that in the system itself. You need to build out quality gates to get the understanding with the KPIs. And <clears throat> for example, the Guardian is one of the very ideal options to verify beyond is my application up. Because you have health checks, yes, liveness probe, readiness probe, and other things. But is actually end-to-end -end the system in place operating correctly when you run multiple flows that deploy at the same time and do significant work. Uh, back. Maybe? Yeah, maybe one, one more thing, because the reason why I'm wearing a captain hat, I'm not sure if people are aware of the CNCF project captain. It's an incubated, incubating project. Um, anybody aware of captain? Just a quick show of hands. Yeah, cool. So captain does, I think, two things pretty well that also help here. A, we are creating open telemetry traces for every deployment that Kubernetes is doing for you. So if you're deploying a workload or multiple workloads that belong to an application, we automatically create a trace that shows you what is Kubernetes internally doing to deploy all of your workloads. So it's an application-aware deployment tracer. On the other hand, it also allows you to do pre- and post-deployment checks. What you see here was inspired by Captain, but you can do this just with the open source version of Captain to before and after you do the deployment you can validate that your system is A, healthy and ready to be deployed into, and after the deployment, you can validate if your system is still ready and healthy by pulling in data from any type of observability tool that you have. This is the quality checks, yeah? And thanks yeah. for putting it in because we're really proud of what we've done here. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> putting that together, of course, we had multiple learnings down the road. So. One of the learnings is, as we said, you need to collect all the information. You need to collect the information to one single source of truth. It doesn't help you if you have a distributed system and all the data is floating somewhere else. You are not getting a single glass of pain. So that is an important part. The other part is also from a learning perspective that it's not easy with a lot of tools combined. Every tool needs individual treatment at a certain degree. and not all the information is easy, out of the box, understandable and available when you start your journey. Another element um, is very important is you need to understand the keys. Every time the system has a jump, basically you need a connector. You need to understand what is actually the key, the key of the workflow, of the pipeline that is triggered that makes it unique. So you know from the code push to the next step, for the executor, for example, that took up that push, automatically did something else with it, so that you can build actually the flow out without modeling it by yourself, by hand. Because handcrafting a flow is nice, 
yeah, tomorrow it's outdated. So this is important. And with the software development lifecycle events, you need to help yourself. You need to get basically up into the right level and the right understanding, and then also uh, move forward. What other do we have? I think important is also the right visualizations. So you need to give the right teams basically the right UIs uh, in order to act. So there comes quite handy, for example, in our product that you can have individual dashboards and notebooks and other types of visualizations uh, that can be very flexible to their individual use case. And as a last element, I think very important, you need observability as the key to be able actually to get better, to improve. Without the information, without the data, without being able to make sense out of that information, yeah, you will just maybe tweak on some spots, but you really will not get faster. And that's a very nice extended use case, I think, of observability, especially also in platform engineering, so that you have a solid platform that runs, a solid platform that is sustainable and uh, is not slowing down the engineers, but is really giving them a tool to improve. Cool, which brings us to uh, collaboration. If you are in a similar space where you have different tools in your end-to-end -end pipeline, and you have some idea of how to monitor it, but you don't really have tools that follow a nice standard where you can stitch these things together, feel free to reach out to us. We have some learnings, but also feel free and make sure you reach out to all of the CNCF groups. Um, we talked about CD events, uh, that the name continuous delivery events is expanding from initially just builds and CI to now also including tests using pi uh, pipeline runs and also deployment and releases. So there's a movement going on in the CNCF to expand it towards larger parts of not just this particular phase. Uh, also, Open Telemetry, they just announced that they are working very closely with CD events and also with a project called IFO uh, to make sure that Open Telemetry understands the same semantics. So, when you're using tools that can emit Open Telemetry traces, that you get a nice end to end trace that stitches the individual pieces together. Um, use this week to reach out to these individual groups. Also, talk to your tool vendors, whatever tools you use in requirements management, in CI, in CD, in testing, in deploying, in releasing, ask them what type of standards do you follow? Do you have a standard model for this particular phase that you're part of? And then figure out how you can stitch it all together. Uh, if you are interested in talking more to us, uh, then you know, we are around after this talk. I know we are about two minutes in, so we have time for questions, at least for two minutes. If there's more time needed, we will be around here also tomorrow at the Dynatrace booth J9. And for the first really good question, I have a book to give away. And there's a question <laughs> in the back. Yeah. Great presentation. Really, really helpful. Um, there's a microphone, yeah. Great presentation. You can hear me. Sorry. 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 It's better for the recording. <laughs> Great presentation. One thing that, that I noticed throughout this, and I know it's not part of the software development lifecycle, is cost, cost of a, a pipeline, and how do you measure that? That really is integral, I think, into to deciding, hey, do we want to really spend this money on this versus not? Does that, do you get, do you get my point? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, cost is a relevant factor, especially around how many resources you are leveraging around your delivery. So also to right shape and right size. So you might have peak times that basically a lot of developers are in. Uh, everybody's pushing and you need to have a lot of builds and a lot of flow running. You might have off times uh, or, or specific other things uh, on, on your schedule where you say, okay, on these days we are not deploying for whatever reason. So the right shaping basically of uh, all the deployment infrastructure is a relevant part. And also, uh, interestingly, is you can measure with all of these your carbon footprint also during on your development. And so cost is always also connected with certain carbon footprint uh, on, on, on output. So 
is very relevant. And cost is also an important part on not the cost of just the deployment tool. It's a cost of how long is my developer stuck because he has no clue where the pod as it actually is and it's stuck somewhere and needs to find out how to get that stuff going anymore. And, and that's a significant cost factor, actually. And if you need numbers on those, read the latest state of DevOps report focusing on platform engineering that says only 40% of development time is productive and 36% of developers are leaving an organization because of, a, of bad developer experience. These are even critical costs, very critical costs. Uh, you deserve the book, if you're interested in it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, we do. OK. Thanks. Uh, I'm curious, what are you doing at the back end when the application is deployed to assess whether it is better or worse than the previous deployment? Is there any kind of AI you're doing to judge that? And does that, is that reflected in your pipeline, uh, the end quality of what you've deployed? Want to go back? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so go we ahead. basically, so we call it quality gating. Uh, so on the one side, we are baselining the critical metrics. We also have, uh, we are enforcing SLO, service level objectives, understand if we meet the key uh, SLAs. But we also look into changes uh, of critical, I call them leading technical indicators. Whether this is something like the number of logs with the latest release has increased by 50%, why is that? Uh, we have new dependencies, why is that? We have new vulnerabilities, why is that? See this as a scorecard. Every time you deploy a change into a lower level or into production, Yeah, we, we, are, we are using our own tool. We're using yeah. Dynatrace for that, yeah. But whether you use Dynatrace or you know, your other observability platform, think about it. Observability allows you to not only look at response time and CPU, but also thanks to distributed traces into architectural uh, behavior, the dependencies, uh, how many logs you create per transaction, uh, how many database make calls you make. These are all architectural regressions that you can also detect. And we use our tool, but in the end, right, whatever your observability tool of choice is. 